All right, let's stand together tonight if you would. And I want you to take your Bible tonight and turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter number 138 tonight. Psalms 138 tonight. Brother Bobby, if you give me just a little bit more monitor, please. Psalms 1, thank you, sir. Psalms 138 tonight. I want you to look at one verse with me out of this psalm, but I want to read the entire psalm tonight. As you know, many of the psalms are about worship. And uh, one fellow's described worship as worship. In other words, someone that is worthy of praise. The Bible says in Psalm 138, verse 1, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods, and notice he says little g, in other words, the psalmist is saying, I'm going to praise God in the middle of everybody. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. In the day when I cried, thou answered me, and strengthened me with strength in my soul. We can say amen to that, can't we miss Amy, Brother Jonathan? All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Through the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord Lord will perfect that which concerneth me, Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Go back with me a moment, if you would, and look tonight at verse number 2 of Psalm 138. I will worship toward thy holy temple, thy name, and praise thy name for thy loving kindness. And for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. You can go ahead tonight and be seated. I want to preach a few things to you tonight about worship. And I trust tonight that you understand, and especially in these days and hours that we've been living in, where we have not been able to get together and to worship as often as we like. I'm glad that has changed. I'm glad that's going to stay changed. But I do want you to understand that worship is a great part of all of our lives. The Bible tells us, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But worship is more than just a shout. It's more than just a raised hand. We can worship God in singing. We can worship God in praying. We can worship God in worship. We can worship God in many areas of our life. But we need to worship God. And worship is what helps every Christian throughout their daily walk with the Lord. I believe that. Most of you would agree with me tonight. Especially during this pandemic. You would agree with me tonight that when you don't worship, it affects you. You say, but preacher, I worship God in my car. I understand that. I worship God at home. You certainly can. 
I can worship God in many places and you can do that. But I want to say this to you. There is something about the assembly of gathering together with other believers in Christ as you worship God that is like no other. I want you to understand this. When God's people got together, even in the Word of God in the Old Testament, the glory fell when they preached and worshiped God and they lived for God and served God. We need worship in our lives. What burdens me about many people is they feel like they can worship God and yet still not ever attend the house of the Lord. And I will say this to you, uh, friend, listen, God wants us in His house. God wants us assembling and God wants us to worship. I want you to notice in Psalm 138, I want you to notice in verse number 2 this phrase, I will praise thee. I want you to see the priority. The priority of worship. I will praise thee. Notice the priority of worship. What does it mean I will praise thee? It means it's personal. It means that every one of us have a responsibility and a priority in our life to worship God. Friend, the number one priority you are to have in your life is to put God in the right place in your life and worship Him with everything you have. We can worship the Lord in our giving. We can worship the Lord in our congregational singing we can worship God in our thanksgiving as we thank Him for all the things He's done for us but the psalmist says I will worship it is a priority in your life and I want to say this to you tonight it ought to be a priority in all of our lives we ought to worship God I remember when I was going through a little bit of this, sitting in front of the phone at home and uh, just skimming a little bit of it one night uh, when I was going through a little bit of this virus and I began to think about how can I worship God at home? How can I praise God at home? Friend, there are many ways, but we have a responsibility to worship God. And I want to say this with a resounding amen. There is nothing like worshiping God in God's house. Amen. That brings me to the place of worship in verse 2. The Bible says, I will worship. But then it says, toward thy holy temple. Now you've got to understand, here in the Old Testament, the psalmist David. And you know that when uh, uh, um, Daniel began to pray, he looked out and worshipped God looking toward Jerusalem. If you will study the history of the people of God, you will find out that the people of God always tried to look toward Jerusalem as they prayed and as they worshiped God. Why? Because the Bible says and tells us here in this psalm uh, that I will worship and praise toward thy holy temple. It is a place of worship. Friend, listen, I'm going to tell you this. I've been saved a lot of years, a lot of years. You add it up, right before my 18th birthday, all the way to 2020. And I've been 56 now, you can figure all that out. But I've been praising God and worshiping God for a lot of years. But I've never until this last year of my life understood what it would feel like. I've been so, listen, I got called to preach one week after I got saved. I have been in church uh, faithfully uh, all of my life, pretty much as an adult, since I got saved. But this last year, I finally felt what it was like to get up on a Sunday and not be in the house of God. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm very thankful for all the many ways that I had to preach, and all the many ways that you had to watch. But I tell you what, when I pull on this property, when I pull on this property, when I turn down White's Mill Road and cross the railroad track, 
I know sitting on the right side, it's not just a metal frame building. It's not just a brick building, a Spanish church, but it is the house of God. It is a place where the church gathers together. This is not the church. We are the church, but this is the house of God where the church gathers together and we come to worship. The songwriter said it well. Brethren, sisters, we have met to worship. And I want to say this to you tonight. We need to worship God in spirit and in truth. The Word of God says that in John 4, 24. God is a spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. That is a place of worship in your life. Can I say this? I believe things in this order I do. I do believe that God's first above everything. You, you cannot tell me that God shouldn't be first above everything. Above family, jobs, finances, everything in your life, God first. Matter of fact, Jesus said that well. Thou shalt have no other gods through the word of God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. What's the greatest commandment? Well, he talks about uh, the love of the Lord with all your heart and all your soul. Loving God with everything. Making sure that the priority in your life is God. There ought to not even be a question about that in your life. My life. I do believe family is very important, especially saved family that loves God and wants to serve God. I believe you ought to try to do your best to have your families a solid Christian family. But I want to say this. I believe church is a huge part. The house of God is a huge part of your life. Amen. You can usually tell in a little bit of an idea where you are spiritually by how much church you miss. Now I'm not talking about for some of you recently. We've got folks in this church that have missed church because of a family member being uh, very critical. Uh, We've got some right now that are missing church because of uh, health issues, physical issues. I promise you if Jerry Harmon could be anywhere in this world, he might slip in here, I don't know. But if it could be anywhere, he'd be in the house of God. I promise you others that we know would be in the house of God. But I want to say this to you. If we're able to go to church and we can go to church, we ought to make it a priority in our life friend we are to worship God be in church and serve God in church amen and I'm glad that I have this kind of crowd to preach to on a Wednesday I realize because of COVID-19 our attendance is not in any service as good as it used to be I do believe it will eventually uh, get back somewhat I pray that it will but I want to say this to you I'm glad you're here on a Wednesday night You don't understand how much better it is to preach to people than it is to chairs and cell phones, but it is. The place of worship. Then I want you to notice he goes on a little farther. He says here in the verse, I will worship toward thy holy holy temple. In other words, there's a priority. I will worship. And then there's a place toward thy temple. Then he says, and praise thy name for thy loving kindness for thy truth. I want you to notice this. There's something to praise him for in worship. What is that? His loving kindness. One writer translates says the best word you'll find in your Bible for loving kindness is mercy. Mercy. Do you know what tonight? We speak much about God's grace and we should. Thank God we are saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. But how many of you glad that you did not get what you deserve? Friend, I'm glad because if I got what I deserve tonight, I would be burning in the charred walls of the damned. I would be lost forever without God. But instead of getting what I deserved, I got what I did not deserve. And that is eternal salvation, a a place in heaven uh, with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Friend, we ought to praise Him for mercy tonight. Amen. I was thinking about Brother Jonathan, Brother Kevin's life. I was watching as all of those doctors and nurses, and that was pretty awesome. I looked at that video several times. Well, they were all applauding as Brother Kevin's being rolled out of that place. And uh, 
I thought about Brother Kevin's life. Many of you don't know, but Brother Kevin at one time was at the Roloff Homes out in Corpus Christi, Texas. Brother Kevin also known what it's like to be in a jail cell. He don't mind you knowing that. God saved him from a life of sin. You know, someone will say, but look at all Brother Kevin went through almost 70 days most of it on a ventilator. Not seeing his family. That's pretty rough, isn't it? It's hard. But that's more than he deserves. Because think about this. Brother Kevin didn't live for God at one time. Didn't serve God at one time. Was in trouble at one time. Was in jail at one time was in the roll-off home getting his life straight at one time. But God, who is rich in mercy, changed his life. Because of that, now Brother Kevin is at home with a Christian wife, Christian family, a church that loves him, a God that's for him, all because of mercy. Amen. Is anybody at Calvary Baptist Church on White's Mill Road tonight glad that God had mercy on you one day? Is anybody glad that God looked past your sin and saw you for who you are and realized He can make something out of you? Friend, thank God for mercy. Amen. Amen. Then I want you to look just one other place and I'm done tonight. Not only do you see I will praise, that's the priority. The place is that holy temple. The praise and our worship ought to be worshiping for His loving kindness. But then He says, For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. You know what God said? We ought to worship God because of His precepts, the Word of God. We ought to worship God because of this Bible. We ought to worship God because of what it is and what it's done in our life and how it can change our life. We ought to thank God that we have the Bible in our life. My daughter the other day was teaching a golf lesson at Forsyth Country Club. The lady she was teaching got to talking about Jesus. And so Danielle got to talking to her about the Lord. The lady was very excited to talk about Jesus and she talked about Him. And then she looked, very, very wealthy, affluent lady. She looked at Danielle and she said, but you know there ain't but one Bible and that's the King James Bible. My daughter said, that's right. And talked to her a little more. The lady looked at my daughter and said, I just love you. She said, well, I love you too. I don't think they've met but twice. But there is a bond right there. So they left the golf lesson. The next day, this lady comes back to the club and has a box. And in that box was a very expensive King James Bible study Bible. And she brought it to my daughter. And she said to her, I wanted you to have a study Bible like the study Bible I have because it's just so good. And she said, I just love the Bibles, which she told her. That's worship. Especially the King James Bible. Amen. Say, preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying this. You and I can worship God just because we have God's inerrant, infallible Word. We have God's Word, and it is God's Word. We can worship God for that. I want you to do me a favor in your life for the rest of this precious year called 2020. 
the year of vision that took it all away. I want you in this year of 2020, if you do me a favor, I want you to be thankful for worship. I want you to be thankful for worship. For a place to go to worship God. Amen. Amen. You and I need worship. And God demands it. He said if we don't praise Him, the very rocks themselves will. I don't know about you, but I don't want no rock doing my shout. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Everybody say amen. amen. The only time you can't praise Him is when you quit breathing in this body anyway. Because the Bible says let everything that hath what? Breath. How many of y'all breathing tonight? Most of you are. A few of you I'm concerned about. But listen to me tonight. If you're breathing, you ought to praise Him. Amen. Amen. Brother David Braddy called me the other day, and I'll close with this. He called me the other day, and he said, Preacher, just want to give you a call. I want to thank you for 25 years ago today stopping by my house and taking a Bible and leading me and Miss Angie to Christ. I still remember that, that night like it was yesterday. I didn't know him from Adam, but buddy, after that night, they became a huge part of our lives and still pastor today. But anyway, he called me and he told me that. And I began to think about Brother David and David's worship. David was rough. I'm not going to glorify sin in his life, but he was mean, rough, Navy rough. David got saved. He didn't know no better, but just praise God, I'm not going to hell. And I'm excited. He goes to work witnessing to everybody that was there. He was a department head in the plant he worked in. He went to the Christians he knew were saved and asked them, why didn't you ever tell me about Jesus? He went to every one of them. One of them was my brother, second in charge of the whole company. I said, why didn't you tell him? I didn't tell him. I said, no, I didn't. he said you didn't. <laughs> brother David goes to a funeral service in a Presbyterian church. And you know, Presbyterian folk are a little quieter than we are. He ain't been saved long. Right in the middle of it, the man mentions God. David says, Amen. And she said, Shh. He said, What? She said, You don't do that in here. He said, Why not? She said, Well, they don't do that. He said, They don't know where God brought me from. He said, If I can't do that, I ain't going back. Worship. Amen. You heard me tell the story about the fella. Listen, I love this church. I love Calvary. Be honest with you, I think it's beyond what I pastored in the first church in a lot of ways. But that first church I pastored, buddy, you talking about worship. You got to understand, out of 300 people that were in that ministry, three quarters of them we led to Christ. So that means three quarters of 300 people got saved in that church. And I'm talking about some rough folk that God saved their soul, but man, did it take a long time to get the outside right. Had a fella got saved. You've heard me say this probably. He got saved. And what long he got in service, where that place would get wild. And I'm talking about wild. I'm talking about wild. I'm talking about it makes some of y'all want to go Methodist. And they get to shouting, Preach on, preach on. I'd have women on front row hollering loud men would. Preach on. I mean, just wild. 
I've seen the whole choir loft empty with people running and shouting. Whole choir. If you stay in the choir, you look like a backslider. Some of them just did it so they wasn't the last one up there. But I remember a fella came to me with his first complaint after he got saved. And he told me, he said, Preacher, I don't know what in the world I'm going to do, but I can't hear a thing you say when they get to hollering. And I said, well, brother, I'm sorry, but I ain't going to stop them from shouting now. I know, preacher, but I, I hope I can deal with it, and I don't know. And I thought he got over it several months. He come to me again. He said, Brother Chris, it happened again. I said, it was Eddie. I said, Brother Eddie, I'm sorry, man. I, I ain't going to stop him from shouting. He said, well, don't worry about it. I said, why not? He said, I looked around me to find out who in the Lord was making so much noise, and I couldn't hear the preacher. And he said, all of a sudden, I looked around and realized I was the one standing up doing it. I said, yeah, you get it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We had some Ike Cavalry one time decide they were going to go to another church because people hollered too much or amen too loud. You know what I say? Find your first Baptist of the deep freeze, Pastor by Jack Frost. But I'm all for old time religion. I wouldn't give you two cents for seven words sung 27 times in a row. I wouldn't give you two cents for a little praise team wiggling on the platform. I, this is me. I pastor Calvary Baptist Church. I wouldn't give you two cents. Listen, I'm telling you, for this teaching ministry that nobody ever preaches. Nail sin. I like preaching. Worship church. Amen. I told Brother Jamie, Jonathan will tell you, girls, great man of God, you're going to get to go here preach, great church. Don't you come back here dead. Amen. Every now and then you shout on general purpose. Amen. If your daddy can go to college he went to and your brother can go to college he went to and they can still worship God, so can you. Amen. Don't let them take the shout out of you. Great church, great people. I don't mean no disrespect. they just not as vocal as sometimes we can be. Worship. Amen. I said I was done, didn't I? Stand to your feet. I got to give you one more thing. It's 824. One more thing. I was in a meeting the other week, second row. There was a child laying there about four years old. It was in a jubilee. Forty preachers there. People shouting, praising God. A little four-year-old's laying on the second row, sound asleep. Sound asleep. I looked at one of the fellows sitting beside of me, and I said, you know why that young'un ain't bothered by that? He said, why? I said, because that young'un's used to that. Some of y'all's babies come with y'all in this church in your womb. I already heard shouting before they ever got here. They'll be all right with it. Amen. I hope you'll worship God. Think about how precious it is to worship God. Father, we thank you tonight for the great number on a Wednesday evening. Thank you tonight, God, for the good spirit tonight. Lord, I do pray you'll bless us as we go to our homes. Give us a good night's rest. Help us this coming Lord's Day to come in here ready for revival. Lord, I pray you bless our young people. Be with Brother Jamie, Brother Jonathan. Be with Elaine and Anna. As all of them head up to school. Pray you watch over them. Give them traveling grace. For our kids that are in school, uh, public school, Christian school, home school, I pray for them during these transition times. You'd be with them. Lord, I pray you give myself, our you pastor and others, leadership on how to help them during these days of uncertainty in our country. Lord, then we pray for America tonight. Oh, God, intervene. I believe you already are starting to see it. Show the devil for who he is. Lord, I pray tonight that, God, you bless some folk down on the Gulf Coast. Lord, that's a major storm coming in. Lord, I pray, Lord, I couldn't imagine a 15-foot wall of water coming in. And I pray you'll bless them, folk. Lord, I pray be with Brother Greg, be with Samaritan's Purse, Brother Andrew, uh, Billy Graham's son, all of those, Franklin Graham, that'll be headed that way. 
uh, be with all of them that are going to try to help folks there. Uh, well, we need revival, not just in America. We need revival at Calvary Baptist Church. Pray for the man of God Sunday night. Pray for myself Sunday morning. Lord, I believe you give me what you want me to preach already. Lord, I just pray you'll give us a good night tonight. I love this church, Lord. Thank you for letting me pastor these great folk. Bless those that are home tonight, those that are watching online, those that may be on vacation looking in. Bless them. Bring us back next time ready to worship. In Christ's name, amen.